I have another style story to tell you guys. Mm. Um, just somebody stopping me randomly in a supermarket. Mm. I love how you couldn't come up with these in the moment. It's been about four weeks, but now, <laughs> you know, you can remember these things. <laughs> See, this is a sick story. This happened the other day and I texted you immediately when it happened. Boom, this just happened. Just trying to live my life and people are stopping me in the street. Hey, you, style lady. Me? Yeah, you. Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Oh, yes. Hi, I'm Sally and my friend Sarah is here. Oh, for the first time, for the love of baby I Jesus, got it right because I'm amazing. Us. Thank you. Okay, first take done. <laughs> Welcome back, Sarah. You've been here Thank every you. week. Yes. And now we're talking about a topic that you know about. <laughs> You're an expert in sexual health. I am not an you expert are. in. Sexual health today, guys. We're going to be talking about that. Um, you know, because safe sex is the best sex and prevention is the best cure. So. <laughs> <laughs> you read that on a sticker? I read it on a bookmark. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody uses bookmarks anymore. <laughs> but the first thing I'd like to actually say is I bought a shirt the other day. Oh, good one. I'm wearing it right now, um, and across it, it says Carol, C-A-R-O-L, Carol, for my favourite movie, and I'm wearing it especially tonight as we record. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> it looks good, doesn't it? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's get into it. Let's talk about sexual health. What's your experience with sexual health? Absolutely none. I'm still a virgin. <laughs> compared to what? <laughs> well, compared to you. Shut up. Oh, what is that? What? Good name. <laughs> How dare you? No, but you, you know a lot about sexual health. As I think everyone should. Yeah. Well, I agree. Um... My experience, I had a bad experience with sexual health in that I went to the doctor and had a bad experience um, because I had heard that lesbians didn't need to have a pap smear. And yeah, I don't know. I'd heard that. Did you read that on Breitbart? <laughs> <laughs> um, it was a Yahoo quote of the day. No. Um, <laughs> No, I'm like really? No. <laughs> um, Why did you hear that? Because it fucking wasn't a Yahoo quote of the day. I mean, Jesus. Um, no, I don't know where I heard it. I, everyone, Everyone's everyone said, said it. it. Yeah, and then they are like, "Oh, your style." <laughs> um, so from previous episodes, we understand. So maybe three people have said oh, it. Oh, whatever. Anyway, I was at the the doctor one time. I went to the doctor. In my head, I had this whole idea that lesbians don't need pap smears, but I was quite young <clears throat> and still in that phase, I guess, where I didn't really say the word lesbian out loud, mm. like, because it still scared me a little, like, Did you go, I'm a... <laughs> <laughs> No, you know what I did? Because it's so me. I danced around the subject for a long, long time and... It wasn't my regular doctor, and he was just, he was baffled. He could not understand what I was saying. Do you think that's because you were bouncing around the subject? Yeah, <laughs> because I, I was like, oh, um, yeah, I just heard that, you know, some women don't, don't need it. He's like, what? Who? I'm like, well, you know, like, um, you know, some women that, Ladies, I don't, don't know, lesbians. <laughs> He's like, sorry? Like, and I'm, oh, I just went on and on. I was so embarrassed. And then I said, lesbians, I'm a lesbian. At the end. <laughs> I'm a lesbian. <laughs> All right, I confess, you've, <laughs> you've caught me. Uh, no, and um, yeah, he went, that's, I've never heard of that. Yeah. And I'm like, well. That sounds very weird off the bat. But a lot of lesbians think that, that they don't need to get pap smears because they are not susceptible to that because they're not having penis sex 
that's a that's a myth going around the lesbian community and I don't know if it's still going around and that's why I want to mention it first up in this podcast that before anyone outrageous. switches it off because they're bored of stories about trolleys um making the world one trolley at a time making the world <laughs> one trolley at a time <laughs> you need a hobby that doesn't yeah. involve sucking dick oh. like <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? Yeah, so no, that is a that is a rumor, and I don't know if there are any lesbians out there who still believe that, but that is not the truth. My doctor um, tells me that all the time. That this is my actual doctor. It is not the truth. You need to get a Pap smear. So I don't understand that. Well, I think because. Pap smears. I th- I, look, I don't know where the origin came from. I didn't make it up, so don't look at me like I made it up. And now but I you have believed to... it enough. Well, why wouldn't I believe it? Because it sounds atrocious. It's about your cervix, your cervix. It's not about the influence of some foreign body penetrating it and making changes. It's about your cervix and its health. So why would you think if there's no penis going into your vagina <laughs> that you would think that that would have an influence like oh i don't need a pap smear I'm... because i thought that there was some thing with there being the friction and the Chasing. penis <laughs> no like the penis getting up in mean, there but... yeah that's what i thought that's what i was saying I thought that as a young lesbian who was still, like I said, still afraid to say the word lesbian. So sue me. Sorry, mind blown (laughs) that you would believe that. It's not really hard. That that would be be believed by somebody else. But a lot of lesbians believe that. I still know lesbians that believe that. To send them all to my doctor who will yell at them. (laughs) No. Yes. That's dangerous. It is dangerous. Yeah. So what about myths for you? Do, you? do you know of any myths that have been going around the community? Not that I can think of. The top of my head. Yeah. Only lesbians are getting fooled by the no pap smear. <laughs> I don't think it's a myth. I just think it's a bit of a cavalier behaviour that I see with. Gay guys that, um, I don't know, they're, they take a bit more risks. Like, sexual. Yeah. Like, is it, are you talking about barebacking and stuff? <laughs> yes. <laughs> For anyone who <laughs> does. This is funny hearing you say it. What? You mean barebacking? <laughs> <laughs> Why is it funny hearing me say it? I know about barebacking. Um, not from ex- sex. Not from experience, but yeah. For anyone who who isn't aware of what barebacking is, it's um, fucking without a condom. So unprotected sex. Unprotected sex. That's a more official term. Oh well, let's call it barebacking because then it doesn't have a connotation of negative, does it? I mean, I think that's probably why it's been more developed that way. Oh, I'm barebacking. I have no real contemplation of this being unprotected sex. <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting myself at risk I don't understand if why... I don't know this person. Why are people having unprotected sex though like that? Like, I don't... Oh my God. Firstly, men. Oh. All men, Sarah? From my experience, the majority. <laughs> some are very good about it and some are very cautious about it. Uh, but the majority don't like condoms, don't like fucking with condoms. It just doesn't feel the same. Right. Well, that's great for you. I don't really care because I'd like to not get a disease yeah. from you. And if you're having unprotected sex with me, my guess would be there's a high probability you're having unprotected sex with other people. With other people, people, yeah. Gross. So I don't want somebody's chlamydia. And so these are just sexual partners for you, aren't they? It's not like relationships. True. Yes, you don't... Oh, you don't know where they've been. Hmm. My point exactly. If you're in a relationship and 
you are in a monogamous relationship and you have trust in that circumstance, feel free to. Yeah, but otherwise. But, yes. I just don't think you should take risks with those things. Obviously, the theory is even when you're giving oral sex you should use the condom as well yeah well when i was looking up stuff for this because just in case there was anything that i'd missed they were, t- mm. they were talking about lesbian sex like like digital sex you putting know, a like, condom on your finger <laughs> wearing a glove i'm like can you imagine that <laughs> let's go no i don't but your hands they have cups. They're open with hangnails sometimes. Yeah, but and I guess you're getting disease. It's through exchanging of body fluids, and if you have something like that, then yes, you're putting yourself at risk. Well, I guess I've always like, I, I, I don't have hangnails, and if I was having sex with somebody, I'd make sure I didn't have hangnails or cuts, because if I'd have if I had a cut, I'd have a bandaid on it because I'm a sook, so that would gross me out too. So. <laughs> your band-aid laden finger just going in and out I'm like Michael Jackson <laughs> I just think it's very logical what a latex fucking glove like you like I wear latex gloves to like clean things like only because I'm so oh so you can do that to clean things but you're not going to do the in an intimate act to limit the Are possibility you? of Getting an infection. Are you out of your mind? Are, Are you, you on crack? Like, <laughs> just, no, I'm not going to put on a latex glove. I might as well put on a silk glove. Like, <laughs> I have more chance of winning. No, see, that's where you are now <laughs> blowing it out of proportion. The woman who believed you didn't need a pap smear because you weren't getting <laughs> penetrated by a penis. <laughs> No, I don't think the the probabilities you're about to spout <laughs> out about it were actually I was, accurate. I was going to say I have more chance of, of winning, winning Miss, teen, Miss Teen USA than <clears throat> than wearing a latex glove. No, that's your choice though. You're well, making a choice. It's also my choice not to win Miss Teen USA. <laughs> so. No, that's a t-shirt. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's why you're not winning. Um, so stylish. They couldn't handle me anyway. Ow. Okay, don't get violent. No, I just hit my knuckles. I just have opinions, okay. No, I just hit my knuckles on the table as my hand came oh, down. table, face. No, because I always talk with my hands. Like I'm very handsy. Don't no. you? <laughs> Can you put a glove on? Don't you know it, baby. Um... <laughs> yeah, but then I always slap my hands down. Oh, I run into a lot of things, though. I'm very clumsy. I fall over a lot. Yeah, because you're drunk. <laughs> you get Ouch. drunk and you fall down. They put steps in stupid places. Why would you have a step? A 30 centimetre step <laughs> out the front of a bathroom at a nightclub. I'm not thinking about that. Why are you going to nightclubs? <laughs> To drink. <laughs> <laughs> to so dance the night away. So you're not doing it alone at home. No. <laughs> I'll do it at home alone too. Okay, so if you're a sexually active person, mm. you risk the following syphilis, chlamydia, gonorrhea, herpes, crabs, hepatitis. Yeah, because hepatitis C, isn't it? You can't get vaccinated for that. It's one of them. Oh, God, I should know this better. I think it is. Yeah. Um, I think the other ones you can get vaccinated for. And I do know that for a fact because (laughs) my doctor is always like, "Um, here's a script to get the vaccinations and we can do it next time. Next time hasn't come. (laughs) What? Tell me about it. I always mean to do it, but I'm a busy woman. Are you too busy yeah. at nightclubs drinking alone? Yeah, falling over. <laughs> That's why I'd wear a glove. I hurt my hand. So you go to like a clinic and stuff, don't you? Uh, I used to go to a sexual health clinic. Mm. 
but now I just go through my GP and I must admit I don't know maybe the clinic makes you think about your circumstances a little more because of the questions they ask yeah because it's kind of like do you how much do you drink do you use illegal drugs yes no um (laughs) (laughs) Uh, (laughs) do you need to be honest with them like do you think yes and that's why one of those answers (laughs) might not be accurate would would that affect anything at all i think they are they ask those questions to develop behavior because obviously if you're taking into a situation where you probably do drink too much or and i say too much into the into the circumstance of oh i'm not just tipsy but i'm in a drunk condition where i have no real control or memory Mm. um and if you're using drugs um that's obviously impairing your decision making skills also yeah So take me through a session. So you arrive at the sexual health clinic. What's it like? You nervous? Yeah, I'm wearing a trench coat, a scarf (laughs) over my head, and really big Jackie O glasses. I use my fake name. What's your fake name? Sally. ever met a nurse they would know your history <laughs> they'd be like oh she's back no oh, um, girl. i do not do those things i walk in fine i'm going to a sexual health clinic i have <clears throat> i'm very liberal with my sexuality but i will just say i'm always safe thus mm. you've already seen in this conversation where i'm like you don't take risks if i was a lesbian which i'm not and i was <laughs> Thanks for clearing that up. And I was digitally <laughs> stimulating somebody. I probably would use a glove. Yeah. All right. So keep going. <laughs> so I walk in, head a hell of a heart. No. <laughs> I'm like, I'm back, sister. It's been three months. Um, How long have I got, Doc? <laughs> ouch. Um, no, just walk in. Give your name, go, a nurse calls you in usually and she just asks her questions. Do they give you a disapproving look? Like No, never I've had. Oh, I will say a story <laughs> about that. But the general process, they ask their questions. How many sexual partners do you use alcohol? How much do you drink? Do you use illicit drugs? Blah, blah, blah. They go through that. And then you do your tests. You obviously... <laughs> Your swabbing areas, you're <laughs> getting blood taken, um, and you get your results within a week. Yeah. Um, the situation I will say is, I am always safe, and I. Well, are you trying to convince yourself or us? Like... No, I'm saying that because it's very important to me. I don't think you need to be hesitant about it. Be safe. Say no, you're no. safe. You've just said it like twenty four thousand times now. Uh, because we're talking about sexual health, and I don't think people take it as seriously as they should. This mm. is your life. Yeah, that's right. Fair. You're very right. Yeah. And just think about the effect that this not only has on your life but other people's lives yes. because there is a window of time where you may not know that you have something and then you are passing it on to somebody else and it isn't a point of oh that's just the case mm. you need to care about that that's why i'm saved that's why i'm passionate about it because yes i am open sexually and have experiences when i want them yeah but I don't take risks. Yeah. No, that's great. Thanks, Mum. Like, that's all we need to know. Yeah, so that's why I say safe a lot, because I think that you need to be very aware of it and proud of it. Um, like a badge. <laughs> badge of honour. Yeah. Um, right next to my rainbow flag. Hey, um, sir, I'm <laughs> safe. <laughs> <laughs> I think you need to. Um, so a few years ago... I had a sexual liaison (laughs) with um, a gentleman 
And at the end of it, we realised the condom had broken. Oh, God. Um, Who hasn't been there? Well, that was the first time it had Me. ever happened. I've never been there. Well, you won't even wear a glove. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not barebacking all over town. Like, I'm just saying I've... You're barefingering all over town by the sounds of it, you little harlot. Um... <laughs> Um, so it was quite a scary situation. Yeah, I bet. So I had known through being, making myself aware of things that there is a medication that you can take and, um, it helps limit you getting something like HIV. Yeah. So it's called PEP and now they have PrEP which is pre. So what some people are doing now is they take this prep basically daily. Oh, okay. It's a tablet a day. And it's obviously limiting your risk of getting something like HIV. <clears throat> My difficulty with that is I think that that then just opens up the door to have more unsafe situations yeah. and feel that you're protected yeah um that's my only concern with it because you what you're right. only protected against hiv yes i think that it only does protect against yeah. hiv um so i in queensland at the time you really could only go to a hospital emergency room to get it wow okay and I think that's generally the case, but I think some GPs do it, but I didn't know that at the time. So this is a few years ago. So I only knew about Google and hospital emergency room. So you have to do it within 72 hours, but the sooner the better. So the next morning I went into the hospital, went to the emergency room and waited to see a doctor. Yeah. <clears throat> and obviously it's a little bit difficult with that first discussion. Well, why are you here? Why do you need to see a doctor? Mm. Because then the conversation when you're like, oh, well, I had this sexual situation. It ended up being unsafe. And waited and waited. <laughs> and finally a nurse called me in and was asking questions about it. What happened? What was the situation? Blah, blah, blah. So obviously I was um, talking about it being anal sex and yeah. that being the situation. And as I'm a transgendered person, <laughs> this nurse obviously didn't realize that because her next question was, <laughs> um, do we need to look to get plan B for you? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. So Hashtag possible. <laughs> And I'm like, no, I'm transgender. I'm just a lady. <laughs> it was, it was a, I mean, the situation is mortifying because you have fear about what can go yeah. on. Um, but obviously that brought a bit of levity to the situation. Yeah. Um, and she said that she'd write that down, but unfortunately <laughs> she maybe didn't or didn't write it in clear enough writing <laughs> because then when I saw the doctor, at the same conversation again. Oh, God. And I'm kind of like, oh, I've already said this to the nurse. And she's like, yeah. oh, she didn't write it down. And I'm like, okay. So what they do is they give you like three days worth of yeah. medication and then give you a script to get the rest of it because it's a 28-day regimen, one tablet a day. Wow. For 28 days. And... I will just say my experience with taking it wasn't positive because I basically had the side effects. Oh, what are the side effects? <laughs> you just feel very tired and lethargic. You can feel nauseous. Mm. Like it's, it's basically it, it, my understanding is it's, it's basically the type of drugs that they were testing out originally with HIV and AIDS. Yeah. So it, it really, is going into your immune system. Yeah. And it's really shaking you about. Wow. And but you, obviously in a positive way. Do you have to get tested at the end of that? You get tested then 
And now they have rapid testing. Yeah. Um, what does that mean? Well, you do a test and it's done in like a minute. Okay. I'm not sure about the accuracy of that, but they do do it. Um, <clears throat> uh, and then they do recommend that you go to a sexual health clinic to mm. have more of a discussion about things. And even though I'd been to the sexual health clinic before, because of <clears throat> my liberal sexuality, <laughs> the nurse is like, oh, okay, I want you to speak to a doctor as well. Yeah. Because it's just about behavior, really. Because I remember a story, I think you said, where they had asked how many people you'd slept with. Yeah, they asked me about that each time. Yeah. And were they surprised when you told them? No, I mean, nothing really registers. I'm mm. sure they've heard probably much the same. Mm. But they don't ask how many people have you slept with ever. <laughs> <laughs> just average it out. Um, <laughs> can I just give you the mean for that? Um, <clears throat> um, they just like, in the, because if you continue to go there, you generally would go three to six months, depending on how sexually active you are. Um, and then they just asked how many people in the last three months have you slept with? How many people in the last six months? Yeah. How did you find out about the birds and the bees? Well, my parents never talked to me about it. Didn't they? No. My God, my mum sat me down with a book. Um, and read it and she was deeply uncomfortable and I was deeply uncomfortable. No, we never had a conversation about it. It was awful. It. Maybe they, I've got, no wonder, like I should have more issues with sex. I mean, I was taught biology and school. I have no issues with it, by the way. No, whatever. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> never talked to me about it. Well, how did you find out about it? Pornography. How did you find out about pornography though? Like what is the steps there? I don't want to talk about this. Why? What kind of video was it? It was heterosexual. Ah, oh, because of what? That would have been in the 90s, wouldn't it? That would have been pretty. <laughs> it was in the 90s. Pretty... 1994. Pretty terrible. <laughs> God. No, I had the uncomfortable conversation with my mum. Awful. I still remember the feeling of me just going, oh my God, this is awful. What did you say? Nothing. She just we just read the book together. Well, she read it, and I sat beside her on the bed. What was the book? I don't know. Something about the birds and the bees. Like, but it was some like in some story form that made it more palatable <laughs> for so, parents. She's like, so there's a flower. You've got the flower, <laughs> and boys like your dad have a bee. Like, yeah. Well, I don't know. I remember. <laughs> Is it something like that? No, it was just a really awkward. It makes me feel uncomfortable. And even now, I'm like, oh god, it's it was... like a fairy tale. It was just like a storybook that was made more palatable for parents to teach about sex. And you, you didn't really even get the concept of sex from it. Cause I like, know it had a flower reference in it. It would have to have probably, been. but you don't get the sex context from it of either. Course. You're like, what? What is this about? Like, and your yeah. mother walked out of the room, closed the door, went to the <laughs> kitchen, poured a straight vodka. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> That's my job done then. <laughs> Good luck. Um, no, I remember when we were little, though, we thought that the that men, we must have known that much. The, but we couldn't understand how babies came out of there if that's where like urine came mm. from. So you know, poor mum had that to deal with. Like my sister and I. Like, Did you pee me out? Because you know, like you get all that stuff in your head. Like, sorry, how does this work again? Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, I think we've got enough for yeah. tonight. I think it's been quite amusing. Yeah. Yeah. I am still hot. My glasses are fogging up. Can you calm down? Steam your windows down. Thanks. <laughs> You've got a horrible voice. Stop singing. I have a horrible voice. I'm, I have be, a horrible voice. I can admit it. I could be a singer. A singer in a band. <laughs> uh, you can pretend to be a singer in a band. We'll go into that in another episode. Maybe <laughs> in the music episode. Um, all right. Thanks, Sarah, for coming and sharing no your problem. sexual health stories with us. Yeah. 
I know you've got more tucked away in that little brain of yours. <laughs> <laughs> Just have no shame about it. This isn't Game of Thrones. We're not walking through the streets having people say shame. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Just be free and be safe. Yeah. Yeah, that's my advice. Word. Word. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> what are you doing? I don't know. I'm saying goodbye. Okay, don't ever do that again. Okay. <laughs> because it was weird. Was it? Yes. Felt good. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> good comeback. Thanks. Bye. Bye.